So Oliver Turvey, welcome to our podcast, Britain's finest, as always. And um, it would be nice to talk of a few about a few things regarding Formula E and, how, and why you took that career path and a few things about that series. Uh, yeah, I uh, joined Formula E at the end of season one, um, at the final round in London, and um, it was kind of uh, yeah, I got a call from Next TV and uh, to 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 do the final race in London, which is, was my is where I live and my kind of hometown. So, you know, it was a great opportunity to to race on the streets of London, and um, you know, I, I think that that first weekend at the fi- the final round of season one went well. I was able to get up to speed and and um, you know to be. Uh, uh, matching Nelson, who was going for the championship that that weekend in in my first weekend, so you know after that weekend, um, uh, Next TV signed me up for season two, and uh, yeah, had a you know challenging season last year. I think uh, with with the car and package we had, but um, I was pleased with my performances through the season against Nelson, um, and you know uh, I'm pleased to be continuing with Next TV and uh, with them again in season three and. Um, you know, I think uh, it's really exciting times to be part of Next TV. And you know, they're a, a new kind of up and coming um, car manufacturer with big plans, and um, certainly they put a big effort into the team for for season three. And uh, you know, it's really good to be. Uh, you know, t- I'm really pleased to be part of Next TV um, in Formula E. Yeah, I can imagine. And also, especially when you see this boom going on now in Formula E, you know, we see Jaguar coming in. <laughs> And uh, there have been talks about Mercedes coming in. And, and I remember sort of when I first saw the first season, you know, and, and to, to where it is already now, you know, not only have the cars changed sort of visualize, like visualize, like the way they look, but also the races are more spectacular, yeah. etc. cetera. And, and how, how sort of, how does it feel to be a part of such a series that is on such an uphill path like now? Yeah, it's really exciting. Uh, I think to be part of Formula E at the minute. I think you know what they've achieved in the first two seasons is uh, is massive, and you know they've you know really created a you know this brand new um, electric uh, racing series in in uh, you know major cities around the world, and you know it's uh, really exciting to you know times, and I think um, you know to be part of the championship, and and certainly with the car manufacturer, more and more car manufacturers joining the championship. Um, you know, with aspirations of having electric road cars, I think it's um, you know only only good for the championship, and it's you know it's extremely competitive. Um, you know, already with the the drivers and the teams involved, but I think it's only going to get more so as more and more manufacturers come in. Yeah, and, and uh, that's also why you got you got me so hooked because I, I remember as I talked so I said earlier um, the first time I watched it, and I was like, what is this now? Because it was so different. It was so different because all of the other series, you know, they, you know, Formula series, they sort of always remind the Formula One, but at the same time, they are a little bit different. But it's like Formula E was uh, such a significant difference from different uh, uh, racing series out there at the moment. So that's what caught my eye. And like, I thought the racing was good. I thought the, you know, the fan yeah. boost was very special. And, and that's something that's very special with Formula E. But if we should talk about, uh, like how the, how the car is to drive. Is there any way you can describe for the people that are not in the car how the car is to drive? Yeah, the Formula E car I think is a really fun car to drive. I mean, it's um, you know we 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 race on street circuits around the world, and uh, you know it's there are obviously challenging circuits because you can't make any mistakes because you have walls everywhere. And but you know the Formula E car is a, a nice car to drive. It's um, you know it's 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 kind of feels like an, any other single seater. Um, you know it's very responsive and uh, you know the electric powertrain is is obviously a lot quieter than um, uh, you know uh, uh, kind of an, any other thing, single seater but you know it kind of uh, you hear other things you hear the tires you hear the suspension and you, you know it's um, you know certainly the response of um, the electric powertrain is very direct so it's you know it's uh, it's a very nice car to drive. All right, cool. And that's that's very nice to hear you say that because I've always wondered how those car cars are to drive, and and uh, that gives a a great insight also. Um, I don't know where to start. It's so much that I want to know about Formula E. Um, uh, if you should talk about the technology spec specifications of the cars, um, as as you as you might know already know, it's of course electric. But uh, from what I know, isn't it so that 
at least one or two Formula One teams are supplying the batteries, like Williams, I think, have been supplying um, sort of to the series. Is that true, or or am I sort of on the right path here? Yeah, no, it will, all the all the cars have the same battery at the minute. So um, uh, yeah, that's this kind of a spec battery uh, supplied by Williams for all all the cars. Um, but from season last season, uh, the powertrains were open. The powertrain development was opened up, so each team could uh, develop their own electric motor um, and their own kind of gearbox and and own kind of rear end effectively powertrain. So, you know, that's exciting. I think for the for the championship and and certainly for development of of the electric uh, powertrain technology, which um, you know will only benefit um, the road cars of the future. All right. Uh, so. Uh, with that said, what can you say about um, the racing and the format that is in Formula E when it comes to sort of uh, the qualifying, the races, how all that unfolds for the people that might not know uh, out there listening? Yeah, it's um, it's the whole uh, Formula E race event happens on on one day. So uh, we have practice in the morning. Uh, we have two practice sessions. Um, one the practice one is forty five minutes, and then we have a half an hour pr uh, free practice two, and then we go into qualifying at kind of lunchtime, um, where where you get a single lap at two hundred kilowatts. So you get extra power for the single lap qualifying, um, and then after that, after that, uh, determines the grid uh, for the race in the af uh, in the afternoon and. Uh, yeah, it's uh, usually a very exciting race. Um, you know, it's a, there, you know always have, in the race we have to manage our energy, and uh, there's always a lot going on with strategy. And um, yeah, it's always exciting races in Formula E. Definitely, I remember the first race. I was in it with um, Nicolas Prost and um, Nicolas, Nick, what, Nick Heidfeld or something. It was for very. Yeah. A very exciting race to say the least that ending was quite... yeah it came <laughs> so um yeah. yeah it's always you know it always comes down to the you know the last well all the way through the race but uh, you know you obviously have to manage our energy and um you know you you know it always comes down to a, even at the end of the race very exciting normally the last few laps and uh, a lot of places can change yeah and that's why uh, although the cars are not as loud and as powerful as um, other cars out there the racing is just fantastic and before we leave formally i'm going to let you off the hook here but uh before we move on uh what can you say about your team next tv and and how the way they work and uh, how you feel uh, the atmosphere and, and the vibe is in the team yeah it's been uh, well there's been a lot of changes uh within our team since last season um, there's been a lot more involvement from Next TV, um, and they've, uh, you know, made some big changes with the team uh, structure, and we have uh, a lot of new, kind of very experienced personnel in the team. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, also they put a big effort into developing the powertrain, and um, you know, our, our, the performance step forward we made this season is um, is clear clear from last season, and um, you know, it was really great to qualify both cars on the front row in Hong Kong. So um, you know, I'm really you know pleased to be part of Next TV. It's um, you know it's certainly a team that is um, you know I think uh, very exciting and kind of team that's going places. So um, you know I'm really proud to be part of uh, part of Next TV. Yeah, and I'm very proud to have you there because you are at the end of the day you are one of my favorite race car drivers. And I've interviewed Mario Andretti and a lot of other big race car drivers. I think you're very special. I think you're doing a fantastic job out there, and it's great to see you at work. Yeah. Um, and uh, we are going to get into the man, the myth, the legend that is Oliver Turvey. But uh, since I am a Formula One fan, I, let's talk a little bit uh, about uh, your involvement with McLaren and, and sort of how uh, that journey started. I can imagine it's a long journey, but uh, let's uh, sort of try to shorten it down uh, a little bit. And that specifically means uh, how did you get involved with McLaren? Um, well, I, I guess um, I, when I was coming up through junior single seaters, um, I got uh, I, got, I got nominated for the McLaren Autosport BRDC Young Driver of the Year award at the end of 2006, and uh, in the UK that was a you know a massive award, and um, you know even to reach be a, one of the finalists is a, a great achievement, and I, I went on to win that award, and and that that kind of um, gave me a, my profile a big uh, rise and. Um, 
I think you know it certainly got me the contact with McLaren and also got me a prize test in the Formula One car uh, with McLaren. And um, you know I kept in contact with the team and uh, when I had my prize test in 2009 um, in RF in the young driver tests that went really well and um, you know the team then signed me as a, a a test and development driver for uh, for the Formula One such team. So, so yeah, I started doing some work with them in the simulator at McLaren, and um, I've been with been with the team now seven years. So it's uh, you know I'm very proud to be you know a test driver for for McLaren kind of Honda race uh, Honda F1, and it's um, you know certainly as a youngster I when I grew up I always saw McLaren as my favourite team, and um, you know to be to be working there now is uh, you know very proud of that. Uh, and uh, I can imagine, and I'm going to tell you something that you might already know, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, it's that yeah. great clip on YouTube with you and Jay Leno. That was awesome. That was pretty cool. Yeah, you remember yeah. you had asked in at Austin, and uh, yeah, I was very lucky to get to meet him in uh, in Austin at a demo event we did uh, in Circuit of America, which was uh, yeah, a cool place to drive an F1 car. Yeah, and that. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm gonna, gonna try to remember. That was the same chassis that that actual car that uh, uh, Lewis and Jensen raced in, uh, and that uh, Jensen won in Canada. That at least the car. I don't know if about the chassis specifically, but wasn't that that car, the 2011 car? Yeah, that was. Uh, I think the same. That chassis was the one that Jensen won in Canada. So, yeah, it's very uh, nice, nice. Well, special to drive that car. <laughs> Feel very fortunate. Yeah, I can imagine. And and I'm just gonna step away just a little bit from from McLaren specifically, just to ask uh, this question. And it is all about Formula One. And how do you feel that um, Formula One had uh, sort of what impact it has had in America? We've just been in, in Austin. Uh, speaking of Austin, uh, we've just been there with Formula One. Yeah. And uh, from from your perspective, do you feel that we are slowly getting closer? To the heart of the American F1 fans, I think so. I think you know, there's been. Um, I think certainly having a, the the Grand Prix in Austin, I think, because you know, you you see how many fans are there each year, and and it seems you know this year there was even more than previous seasons. So I think you know, it's, it's Formula One's becoming more and more attractive uh, to the you know the fans out in in America. Uh, obviously, they have their own their own racing out there as well. So. You know, it's. Um, I think you know they. Some of them, you know, follow follow Formula One, and um, you know, certainly um, there's there's many F1 fans out there. Yeah, and um, it's very nice to hear somebody that sort of are more involved in the business because it's also been on my mind because it's sort of very important that Formula One breaks through in America to really make it as well as since America is a very big market uh, for Formula yeah. One. Uh, and with that said, let's. Uh, Go back to you, of course. This we are, this is all about you, Oliver. So um, let's talk about uh, what sort of lies ahead in your future with McLaren. Are you keep doing the development work for the team? Are you doing some race series where you race on MP12C or any spec of of a McLaren car? What is your future uh, with McLaren specifically? I mean, uh, at the minute, um, you know, I have uh, I'm. You know, uh, very happy to be a test driver for the Formula One team, and that's uh, kind of you know I'm doing a lot of work with the engineers and with the team, and and supporting uh, in the simulator effectively um, uh, for races, and um, you know very you know proud to be part of the team, and you know hoping to get the team back to to winning ways. So it's you know I've been working very hard with the team and with the engineers in the simulator on on kind of the car development and. Uh, you know, continue to do that. But in terms of racing, I, you know, I'm very much uh, focusing on Formula E and uh, focusing on racing with Next TV and, um, you know, uh, being able to try and win races in Formula E and, and win the championship for Next TV. Yeah, well, uh, from what I've seen from uh, from uh, videos and your, your racing on TV, I think that's going to happen uh, very, very soon for sure. So uh, good luck with that. And uh, at least the little country Sweden are watching you. So so don't forget that <laughs> and yeah. uh, with that said we should sort of uh, talk about you as a person and uh, back the back the tape a little bit and um, have you always been that uh, 
sort of thirsty person for for speed and racing or have how did sort of your journey into the world of motorsport uh, begin and unfold for you yeah i mean um my my father was always a big motorsport fan and um you know he uh, he got me into uh, kind of watch or well, i watched formula one with him when i was a kid and um we went to the british grand prix when i was five years old and um uh, camped in the in the track and uh, you know the whole atmosphere of, of Formula One and uh, of motorsport. We went to watch British touring cars and you know I was just you know a fan of motorsport and um, you know my dad worked in the car industry and and he always wanted one of his um, uh, you know in one of his colleagues had uh, had his sons were karting and um, you know it was kind of by chance that it, my dad actually wanted to have a go on a race car and he he took me along. Fortunately, when I was seven years old, and I had to go on a, a, an outdoor car, and, and absolutely loved it. And it kind of started from from that at my local track, and we we just went along. Um, I started as a hobby, and um, you know went along to my uh, local track and did um, started racing there, and I won my first five novice races. So it kind of um, you know just started as a hobby with me and my dad going uh, going karting, and uh, yeah, started doing well and I won my club championships and then I moved up to British kart in championships and um, I won two British junior kart championships so it's it kind of at that point I realized that I, I could have a career and um, you know I wanted you know had the aim to, to reach the top of motorsport and to be a world champion so you know um, that's why you know I'm very pleased with where I've got to and you know I think to be racing in Formula E which is a world championship against some of the best drivers in the world i think it's uh, you know it really gives me the chance to achieve my dream yeah well uh, and that's that's sort of what uh, what's so important to have sort of uh, i think that's sort of what i'm trying to say here is it has to be in a big part uh, to have that space to sort of find your own way to not have pushy parents to sort of tell you or maybe you know because if you have a parent that has been, maybe been into football it can be easy that the parents sort of push the kids to become that without them yeah. sort of finding their own way and you feel that you sort of have the space to sort of really sort of develop, sort of evolve as a, as a as a individual i shall say have you always felt that and you never felt pushed to do anything no, uh, well, no, not at all. I mean, my my parents have always, uh, they've never pushed me into the sport, but, you know, they've always been very supportive of uh, of me and, uh, you know, always helped and, and wherever they can. And, you know, me and my, as I say, me and my dad went karting together um, when we were younger. And, um, but it was always, the, I always wanted to do it and I always wanted to, you know, to, to you know, to achieve uh, what I could. And I, I guess... I'm very competitive in everything I've done in, mm. in my life and, um, you know, I've always wanted to win and, um, you know, I, I've been racing now uh, over 20 years, so it's, um, you know, something that is part of my life. You you have to, you know, live motorsport every day, otherwise um, you can't be successful. So, I, you know, I think it's, it's uh, something that I wanted to do and, um, you know, I'm very proud of what I've achieved. Yeah, well, I, I can imagine that and, and you know, of course, looking through your cv should be you know and you have had a great career and you have so much uh, ahead of you as well so how old are you now 29 28 how old are you yeah so as you see there's a, lo a long road ahead and uh, hopefully the formula is going to work out and uh, it seems like you have you're keeping yourself busy so that's very nice to hear yeah. um if you look through some of the series is sort of you raced, uh, you raced uh, Euro Le Mans, you Blanc Pain, ran the three and a half, etc. And you know these series are very different from one another. And sort of when you look at them specifically, is there any set of skills from uh, each and individual series that you felt you can sort of uh, sort of make you a more complete driver? Yeah, well, I think you know, throughout my career, I uh, my parents never had the the kind of funding to su support me even um, in in karting. I was very fortunate that I had a kart manufacturer that, that supported me and, and an engine uh, tuner that kind of supported me uh, throughout my karting career. And um, even when I, when I stepped up to single seaters, my um, my my parents didn't have the kind of funding. I was very fortunate to get some sponsors that helped me and. 
you know, really without the Racing Steps Foundation, I wouldn't have been able to progress up to Formula Three level. And um, you know, they really they really kind of supported me and gave me the opportunity to get to where I am today. So, you know, it's it's been uh, I've had to work hard to achieve what I've done, and um, you know, it's been been tough. But I think that makes you uh, you know a, heart, a fighter, and you know you know, appreciate everything that you have. And, um, you know, I, I've, yeah, even after GP2, uh, I struggled for uh, the following season to get a race drive. And um, then I was able to drive in GTs uh, with McLaren for one year and then also in um, then do some prototypes in LMP2 um, and and then go, go to Le Mans, which was an amazing experience. And uh, I was able, to, in my second year, able to win, uh, take win at Le Mans in LMP2. Um, and you know, I think the experience of driving different cars, and and more recently, I've been also racing in Japan with Super GT, and okay. you know, driving different cars. I think you learn uh, learn lots. Uh, you learn different things from different cars, and, mm. and I think as a driver, that makes you stronger if you can jump between cars and um, you know, uh, more adaptable to each each car. Exactly, and uh, I can imagine that's very very important uh, when it comes to the world of motorsport today. As you've seen, you might know Felix Rosenquist, which is also racing yeah. in, in uh, Formula E. And uh, my point here is very simple. Uh, he's raced in DTM, he's raced in Indy Lights, yeah. he's uh, uh, won the F3. And my point is quite a simple and pretty much exactly what you touched on that being adaptable to the opportunities that might come is very cru so a crucial for your future success because Formula One is, that's a long shot. Although I would love to see you there, uh, it's very hard to get there. But in, in, in that case, I can imagine it's very good to be adaptable. Yeah, definitely. I agree. I mean, um, I think uh, in the past, I think drivers used to drive many different cars and, um, you know, even Formula One drivers would drive in, in different series and different cars. And, um, you know, I think um, as a driver, I think you always learn um, whichever car you're in. So, you know, being able to, to to drive different cars and race different cars, I think you, you as, as it makes you stronger as a driver. And I think, you know, um, I certainly feel stronger for being able to, to drive different cars and, and, and you know, learn, learn each time I'm in the car. And um, that's... Uh... There's a life lesson there for sure, and uh, it's very nice to hear you because it's always so interesting. Because we, you know, when you hear these different uh, people talk, you know, whether it's uh, a NASCAR driver or it's a indie indie car driver, you know, everybody has their own background, of course, and their own experiences. And so interesting to hear the journey to either the top or to the to the world of, of motorsport. It's very a very tough world. Everybody's there to take your seat if you're if you sort of have a little bit of a uh, of down period there and um, it's yeah. very nice to see that you're doing well and, and to hear how the world is from the inside so with those words Oliver Turvey it's been an honor to have you on the first I bet your first Swedish podcast and uh, thank you for for being with yeah. us you're a great talent and uh, I wish you all the best thank you very much